Your style is constantly evolving, and it's time your glasses start keeping up. With pair eyewear, changing up your frames is easier than ever. Just snap on a new design to transform your look whenever the mood strikes. One pair, endless possibilities. With Pear, you get a great pair of glasses at a great price. They make glasses fun. Swapping off frames is a snap, literally, thanks to magnetic tops. <laughs> I love a magnetic top, Bob. Just choose a new top, remove the old one, and snap the new design into place. Pear's virtual try-on lets you sample their wide variety of frame shapes right from your computer. I love being able to have sunglasses while I'm out driving and then just swap them up and chic when I'm done driving. What did it do? What? Get glasses as ever-changing as you are with Pear. Go to PearEyewear.com slash Fiverry for 50% off your first purchase. That's 50% off at P-A-I-R Eyewear.com slash Fiverry. starting there is one time we did a podcast and we had to start so many times because you had internet problems do you remember this and then every time we started this happened a couple times for us this has happened definitely more than once no that, no no but it was one, one time was in a hotel or something it was, it was one time specifically we had to start like four times and by the third time i was like this is insane and every time we started you wanted to act like nothing happened it was very funny to me well because when you're starting a podcast they don't know about the times we didn't do it. So what's the point of being like, but I, I don't want to start podcasts and be like, oh my God, guys. But us sitting rivalry, we tend to lean into the ridiculousity of it. And we're like, girl, this is the fourth time we saw this podcast. This is crazy. And Bob was like, hey guys. And I thought it was very funny that you were acting so weird. so strange about it. I don't think I was being strange about it. I don't think that's strange. I think that I think that it's professional. And I think that... Given that we had note that people were coming in with literally zero context, I was like, this feels like a, a great way to to, to start. Uh, it's kind of like when reality TV, they say you can't, you, you really don't want you to, um, the reason why you can't really talk off camera in drag race is because they're like, if something resolves or happens off camera and then you guys come back and it has changed, it's just kind of hard to. Um, oh, I get all that. that. I understand. Civil rivalry. We are known to kind of be leaning into how wild it is. I we had to start like eighteen times, and it was just that one. Because normally when we have something, you're like, "Yo, we we have to do this three times." Blah 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 blah. blah. But this one, well, it's usually this because one we're cut off in the middle. Often, if we're cut off in the middle, then I'll come back and be like, "All right, that the old guys have noticed a big jump here." So we're jumping in, but I think it was because we kept starting back at the beginning or something. But yeah, but we were also like, we'd be like 10 minutes in and we'd like be deep into something and we'd have to whatever again. It, it was just, it was just signature. This I don't one, think it was strange behavior. This one time you were just really into not breaking um, the illusion that we had started. Like, again, it's, it's not really, I just thought this one time was very funny that you were just really gung-ho about it. I thought it was very interesting for me. Anyway, so today was the last day of our tour, the last the last stop on this leg of our tour. We were in Houston, Texas. Um, I was most recently in Texas when I did a... What city was I in? Arlington. I did Arlington, the Arlington Improv here in Texas. It was a good time here. Um, and before that, I have not performed in Texas. The last time I performed in Texas was when... I was here with Murray and Pia for the Christmas show. And me and Vanjie, that, that video of me and Vanjie on my reels where we're doing burn, baby, burn, disco inferno. That's for the Christmas show? That's for the Christmas show. Yeah, Vanjie's doing disco inferno for the Christmas for show. For Christmas? I mean, and, and, and the Murray and Pia Christmas tour is normally like the, <laughs> the first number is like your Christmas song. And in the second number, girls just kind of did whatever they felt like. That's interesting. When we, when we did it, we did, we did, we did like double Christmas. And what I saw out of the, when I saw it, it felt like it was all Christmas. When I saw it at the uh, at the the wherever that place was down downtown in, in LA, the what's that theater called? The Will Turn. The Will Turn. Um, even Brooklyn did two Christmas numbers. Who hates? Who notoriously hates Christmas? Yeah, I don't mean I don't know. I don't, that year, a lot of girls did that. Maybe after that, Murray and Peterson. Maybe it was like, hey, girls, I would like them both to be Christmas. I don't know, but 
that tour, that tour, the first number girl was the first number the girl did was always like Christmas, and the second one was kind of like whatever. Oh. I do remember that uh, Kim Chi just did a regular song, and then she's added wind and jingle bells to it. It's very like cool. it was just some song, and then she's added jingle bells and wind. It and I thought cool. it was a Christmas song, and she goes, "No, I just added. I just had someone add jingle bells to it." And I was like, "Honestly, that's very very smart." I was just asking, adding Jingle Bells to WAP or adding Jingle Bells to um, Niggas Ain't Shit, The Holes and Tricks. I actually really, I thought about doing a Christmas album a couple of years ago because I wrote my song, um, Deco. Mm-hmm. I also came up with a song like uh, Frosty the Bad Bitch, uh, Rudolph the Red Bone Reindeer. Um, and I wanted to do this like whole like Christmas album. Um, because I, I really like, I like Christmas songs and I like, um, I, I was inspired by the, like the 12 days of Christmas because I want $1,200, five months free rent. I don't know that. Really? No. Who sings that? I can't remember who sings it. 12, what is it? Uh, it's, I think it's like the 12 hood days of Christmas. Yes. Wait, wait. 69 is 12 ghetto days. It is the Quad City DJ. Yeah. You never heard the song? Fucking Bob. Fucking Bob. Fucking Bob. Fucking Bob. Fucking Bob. And then it goes, um, you never heard this? Fucking Bob. Fucking Bob. Fucking Bob. Fucking Bob. Fucking Bob. Fucking Bob. Do you know the, the Quad City DJ? No. You do? Shut the fuck up, Bob. But that was a classic for me growing up, and I was inspired by that when I wrote uh, Deck a Ho. Deck a Ho if she gets mouthy. Um, and I just really. Deck a Ho. <laughs> uh, that's the one. That's the one. That's the video you filmed in, in Hell's Kitchen. Well, I did it twice. Yeah, I did it in, in Hell's Kitchen. And then I redid it again with Shangela. Right. I did a remix to it with Shangela, yeah. And, and it was uh it was it was I think Princess Lockery was in it. Mm-hmm. You Desiree was in it. That Desiree girl was in it. The one I said, you know what's my name, Desiree? Desiree my, was in that. My friend, I think my friend Shakotha was in it. I don't know who Shakotha is. Shakotha, she like has really short hair. Um, she's like a friend of mine who a friend of mine who does improv and stuff. I think I do know she goes actually. She's she's really fucking funny. She's a really funny act. She's from Texas. Oh my god, that's so funny. She called it. It's just because we're in Texas. I'm like, oh my gosh, she called this from Texas. Um and I can't remember. Maybe I think I think that locker room maybe brought a friend. This is locker room. This is locker room. Patty in it? Patty's in it. Patty's a little a little bad bitch elf in the video. <laughs> That was uh, that was when me and Patty first started hanging out. Patty came by and Patty, I was like, Patty, I want you to smoke a cigarette and wear these uh, red panties. <laughs> it just and it's like that pan shot. Marty was in it too. That's when you like throw a coffee. I threw some coffee in Marty's face. Uh, oh my god, that was a fun video. It was cold too. It was like in the winter. Yeah, I just remember Patty standing outside smoking a cigarette in these panties, and we had like, and it was like. That was like the first time I was like, Patty, let's go. I have an idea. I just want you to come up and, and be a, a bad bitch elf in my video. Oh, Patricia Meyer. And also, shout out to Patty and Kennedy, who works very hard on this tour. They have like a lot of job things that end up coming, that they had to just end up doing last minute. And this is a great job. I'm very grateful for um, my little Patty and my little Kennedy. And I'm also really like so, I feel so blessed to have had the House of Jusky tour so on this tour. They are, I mean, they bring so much. They bring so much to the show. Like y'all don't even know. I mean, every dancer we we've, we've worked with brings a lot to the show. Yeah, for sure. But they they it's like it's 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 like it's a special guest. They're a, it's like special guests. Oh yeah, you know? they're great. And I, I mean, love 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 them. They're so funny and 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 and, and intuitive. They have, like they all have very different personalities. It is like four. They're almost like people. No, it's just like they're so their 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 personalities are so. Like dichotomous, you know what I mean? It's it's like it's like it's like Brooklyn, who's like the young one who's like always screaming, but then really quiet, but then being extremely goofy, and then Kamaya, who's who always running with a chair. 
And Kamaya is one who like like she knows all the TikTok references. Whenever I reference a TikTok video, Kamaya says, "Oh yeah, when they do the same OG, she always knows that kind of stuff." Uh, DYU who just has some really brilliant stage like instincts. Like I watch DYU, and I'm like, "Oh my god, uh, mm-hmm. who would have ever who would have ever thought of that?" And then I feel like uh, D Bougie really uh, centers everyone and brings them in with his like overall calmness. father of the house, honey. Yeah. Overall father, the father. Yeah, I, I love him so much. I was looking at a video I was saying, I was like, I'm really glad that we are like similar in height and size because I wouldn't want to be like fucking touring with fucking someone like my big ass. <laughs> if you were just in the whole house, you could tour with like, 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 like me and fucking Georges. Imagine if you and your channel doing a tour together. I have. I've been around. I've done three seasons of a TV show. Channel. I was saying, but like doing like a a, a summer where you have to go on tour, y'all doing dances, like all the all because Dan- Chance is probably the size, size and height of the rest of the house music tour. Chance is about well, she's shorter than Brooklyn. Brooklyn's Brooklyn's about five ten. What about your height? Well, Brooklyn's also skinny. Yeah, and Chance is about five six or five five. She's Chance's bitch. I watching Chance on Dance with the Stars. I'm like, this is she just looks like. Just a little lady. Some she, cisgender woman. That's on TV. She looks like just a little lady just on TV dancing. I'm like, bitch. <laughs> like, if I did dance with the stars, I, I couldn't be in drag. Yeah, that's not saying I'm in drag. Like, I'm not big ass. I'm about to be up in there some man trying to fucking. Sp- I would, if I did dance with the stars, I, wanna, I would want to be in drag. I would I just want to I want to feel the fantasy, honey. I would love to feel the fantasy. I would feel so glamorous. I would feel so fierce. If I was in drag with some man spinning me around and putting me over his shoulders. I would love on that. your shoulders. Yeah, I want to get on his shoulders. Like, like he's like, like hoisting you up. Yes, I want the full fantasy. Honestly, I think I can. I think I can have that. I think you deserve that. I think so too. Um, and and there, I mean, they, but there have also been some like you know big people on dance. But not like us, bitch. We are we are big men. We we are even bigger ladies. I don't I don't I don't think they have had. If I was going to dance with the stars, I cannot see a world where they would have had a woman bigger than me. I don't know who all has been on there. I know, I know Nene Leakes has been on there. She's about she's about five ten. You know, Nene Nene's five ten, but I have I've met Nene Leakes in person, and I am I'm much I'm larger. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like Leslie Jones. Like me and Leslie Jones are the same height, but I am just larger than she is. I'm just a, you know I'm just a man because you know? yeah, like I'm just I'm just bigger than Leslie Jones. Yeah. Um, Wendy Williams is on it. Wendy, Wendy Williams is five ten. She was nice with the stars. Yeah, she went home second. She did well on uh, Mass Singer this year. Yeah, but also Wendy's clip on Mass I'm Singer. a native New Yorker. How you yeah, doing? she's not even singing. She's literally just talking. Imagine, I can't believe that the Mass Singer was so fucking thirsty enough to have Rudy Giuliani on the Mass Singer. Like, after all that fucking dumb Rudy piece Giuliani of Singer? shit. Yes, also after all the dumb shit that that fucking dumb bitch did, they had him on the Mass Singer. You know, so the, I watched the first season. I was so glad to pain won. I didn't watch the first season. Oh, I thought Donny Osmond was really good. Tony Alton was the peacock. I don't was, was the Yeti. I don't understand what. So the guests, the, the judges are trying to guess who it is. So that like what the, guess, you, the world and the judges, yeah. What gets you eliminated when people don't guess who you are? I think it's a combination of guessing who you are and not doing a good job. I think it's like it's a, it's a double edged sword. So like you get on there and you don't sing very well, but everyone doesn't know who you are. Do you stay like? I don't, not necessarily. I don't see. I, I, like, I like understand I think, how it works. I think Terry Bradshaw or some football player was on there, and he wasn't very good, and no one knew who he was, and they took him home. I think it's a combination of you have to do well and them not knowing it helps. I mean, so which also the, ju- the, the judges. Are, I, think, that I think singing well is is the one that is the most important, mm-hmm. and I think that the judges are a lot. They're often acting like they, don't they have to. There's someone on this current season who is just clearly like Ooh. every the heart. Have you heard the heart? I'm gonna play the heart for you, and you tell me if you if you know who this is. Like this is this is it's not as obvious as when it was Patty Labelle, which Patty was Labelle hilarious. was, in my opinion, so far to date, the most the most ridiculous. Like, like well, no, know. Wendy Williams was the most. Yeah. I'm a native New Yorker. I think she even said, "How you doing?" Like it was insane. It was like, all right, she's not even a native New Yorker. I know, but she was singing. This. It's just a song, wasn't it? I think people sing a lot of songs. I think someone's saying I am titanium, but I don't think they're really titanium. Well, I thought it was like her little clues or whatever. I saw this video, video today that made me think of you. That was really, it really made me think of you. Can I play that first? It was this, sure. this clip and I was like, you know what? I actually saved it under like, I was like, Monet really is like this. 
Name an annoying thing that people base their entire personality about. Here's the thing about me. I am real. I am from New York. Watch how you talk to me. Watch how you talk. I'm from New York. This isn't good pizza. No, I know real pizza. I'm from New York. I miss the seasons, you know, because here's the thing. I'm from New York, and there are seasons in New York, and that's where I'm from, New York. She looks good, but that's not real fashion. Here's the thing. I'm from New York, and the fashion in New York is incredible. I mean, that, and that's where I'm from. It's incredible. I miss walking. These are not even things that I say, though. It's, it's not those things, but it's, it is very nerdy. Well, I'm from New York. What? Well, I'm from New York. Well, I think, it's like I'm from New York. Do you, I mean, I maybe I do. I honestly don't think I. I, I don't. I don't think I do Mitch that. Being from New York, very often. I don't think so. But maybe I do. I mean, y'all comment below if I do. I don't. I don't I, no one has ever given me that critique, but work. I really. I don't think they have. All right. This is uh, the heart. Also, look at this here. I know who it is. It's Amber Riley. Yes, yeah, Mercedes. <laughs> it's Amber. This is Riley. Yeah, it's Amber Riley. And everyone's like, okay, Amber Riley. It's, it's, it's well, worth also when, when, like, Riley, Ken, go off. When, like, Ken Jung or anyone that goes and they're like, I don't know who it is. And they revoke, they're like, oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. So they, well, they, before I break, there was one that was really ridiculous. Do you remember when? I, okay, the most obvious one. How did it know? Was Kermit the Frog? Who was Kermit the Frog? Kermit the Frog was on the show. Oh, was he was the snail. I didn't know that. And the snail so was the like, guy who voiced the Kermit the Frog was singing. Yeah, and he was like Tick Tock on the. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it well, was Caitlyn Jenner. Well, Caitlyn Jenner was on there too. Caitlyn Jenner did Tick Tock. Oh Tick Tock on the. <laughs> Really? You haven't seen Kayla Jenner do TikTok? All right, this is right before the break. Last thing before the break. Let's take a break. We'll listen to Kayla Jenner after the break. And we're back. Do you think... Wait, we're looking to play something. Oh, Kayla Jenner. I mean, we played it during the break. And, I mean, you all... What break? The break we just said we took. We just said a break? Also, it might be audio that's like... Yeah, copyright play, yourself. Show, play, play it. yourselves, but it's very. What do you think of it? She sounds ridiculous, and I can't believe they they engage and act like that shit. Like she sounds ridiculous. Well, ever, ever, I mean, ever, the point of passing isn't necessary to sing great, but you're trying to, to you're trying to trick you're trying to trick people. And I mean, she, I mean, nothing about nothing about. Kate I don't Jenner. think she has the ability. I think she's like Wendy. I don't think she has the ability to make her voice not sound like her voice. I'm sure. Like I Wendy's think, just gonna sound like Wendy, right? I think. I think. I think it's ridiculous. When Wendy was up there, like, well, you know, she's dressed as lips. Like, well, you know, I'm here. I'm singing my song. How you doing? That is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I really love her voice. I love accents so much. I always have the thumbs up. I just really love accents. I kind of. Loathe, not loathe, but regret losing my accent as much as I. But well, you don't have an American accent. You still have a Southern accent. No, nah, basically, it's a it's a relatively neutral American accent. Is what I'm talking. Yeah, about. but you guys in the UK, they're like, oh my god, I love your accent, bold. They do not say that. <laughs> I mean, they say that, and I'm not not you specifically. They say about Americans. Like when I go to the, to, the, to the UK, and they're like, oh god, I, when I used to hook up with guys in the UK, they would always be like, oh man, I just I just I just I just, I just love your accent. I'm like, ew. Um. I think that would you ever do a celebrity um, show like uh, you know Surreal Life is back? Is it really? That's Real Life is back. Dennis Rodman's on it. Oh, he's. I feel like he's been on it before. No. The Surreal Life is. I remember. That I used to watch. It's Surreal the Life first now. ever like celebrity reality TV show. Yeah, I remember one of one of the seasons I remember watching was the one with um the woman, the first winner of Top Model, Adrian. That season she was on. I was like, oh wow. This real life cast is uh let's see. This real life has uh Christopher Knight. That's uh, the season no, I was twenty twenty two. I read that's the season I watched with him and, and Adrian. And I think they like dated for a while or something. Tamar Braxton, Dennis Rodman, Stormy Daniels, Frankie Muniz. I was just talking about Frankie Muniz with Andy. It was so funny. What about him? I was saying, I was like, do you remember? I was like, do you remember um the what was the show called? Um, Malcolm in the Middle. That was Frank, is that Frankie Muniz. Frankie Muniz, yeah. And um, uh, Big like, Little Liar. Oh, a uh, uh, Big Liar. No, the, the the movie did with with Amanda Bynes when like the guy. And 
Brian Cranston. Big so fat like liar. Big fat liar. I used to love Big Fat Liar. I was Amanda Bynes was such an amazing actress. She was so great. The, the Amanda Bynes show was such a great ske- sketch comedy show with this young woman. She she's she was a really nice actress. It really sucks that like Hollywood or whatever the industry really fucked her up. Yeah, Amanda Bynes, Amanda Bynes is a very good actor. I can't find a full list of all the people. Tamar Braxton's on it. Um, Let me see. You Frank don't know the name. Um, Kim, Kim, um, 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 I'm Sinclair from Living Single. Yeah. Is that? Uh, Manny, Manny uh, MUA. Manny MUA. Who is this black guy? He looks like Trip from the real world. Who I was obsessed with. I mean, back in the day. Dennis Rodman. Stormy, Stormy Daniels. Daniels uh, Trump's. Uh uh-huh, legend of August Alcina. August Alcina, he's the one that um that um, Jada Pinkett had the um what you call it? Um uh, entanglement. Ent- entanglement. Oh, that's what that is. Manny, Manny MUA. MUA. Kim Coles is her Kim name. Coles. CJ Perry. Who the fuck is CJ Perry? CJ Perry is a professional wrestler. Work. Frankie Muniz. Frankie Muniz looks great. He looks like he has an age of day. As the cat. Would you ever do a show like that? So there, like Alaska did one called like Beyond Scared Straight. Scared Famous. Scared Famous. Oh, Scared Straight is a prison. Yeah. <laughs> show oh, Dewan loves. No, have you ever seen the show Six um, 90 Days In? No. No show. Oh, 60 Days In. Anyway. Um, I would, depending on what. I don't I don't know what. Dancing with the Stars. I would have said one like Dancing with the Stars sounds more appealing because like you're working towards the goal to like win in the mirror ball trophy. Surreal life. I don't, what is the goal? What are you? What are you trying to do in surreal life? Oh, it, it, back in the day, it was it was kind of like um, the real, the real world, world for celebrities. celebrities. There's also a uh, big celebrity, Big Brother. Would you do that? I would do that for sure. Celebrity Brother. I would do. I would do Survivor. I would do Celebrity Big Brother. Is there a Celebrity Survivor? There isn't. They just put celebrities on the regular seasons. Oh, really? There isn't like a separate celebrity one. Yeah. Um, like who they put on? They put on like I know football, nothing about Survivor. They put on football players before. They put on some actors. The guy. Have you ever seen School of Rock? Yeah, one of my favorite movies. The principal, he was on it. Um, some act, act, actors and actresses. The principal was a woman. Oh, uh, uh, not maybe. Um, was, I think it was uh, Joan Cusack. Okay, the white guy, the white, uh, the white guy. Uh, I don't you know mean the one that he was replacing. Maybe I think it was Sarah Silverman's boyfriend in the movie. I said School of Rock so long ago. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Joan Cusack was the principal in School of Rock. Now you mentioned you Joan Cusack. School of Rock cast. Was it John Cusack? She's great. Him, Mike White, Ned Schneebly. Yeah, Mr. that Schneebly. that was that was uh, Sarah Silverman's boyfriend, who Jack Black was replacing. Yeah, Ned. He was on it. Uh, a, a, a bunch of football players have been on it. A lot of people have been on Survivor. Celebrities. Yeah. Um, I would do something like that, but. Just living in a house of celebrities. I mean, maybe that could be fierce. It just doesn't sound like a whole bunch of fun. But I'm not close out to the idea. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I just don't. Um, something like Survivor, Big Brother speaks to me more. What about Does you? it feel like a hit to your fame? Because there's some really famous people who do these. Oh, yeah, for sure. Comp- I mean, Patti LaBelle. Yeah. Um, I would do Mass Singer, for sure. Jewel. Mm-hmm. Jewel uh, came with one Mass Singer. Todrick Hall was a runner-up. Todrick did really well. Oh, Todrick was great. He was he was really good. Actually. Candy Burris, one mass singer. Oh, did she? Yeah. So she was been, the archangel or the angel, or something. So like it's that. been T Pain. I don't know who won season two. Did it? Candy. Wayne won Brady won once. I think he did. I think Wayne Brady was season two. It's Candy was season three, and that's all I know. And then um, Jewel. Jewel. Yeah. Well, so I mean. Do you do you think you're do you think that you're more famous now after doing um, All Star Seven? I don't think I'm more famous. I think I'm still the same level of fame. I you really think, think so? You don't think you you don't think you that they help you reach a wider audience at all? I mean, it has maybe maybe hit. I, I feel like there are different ways to to uh, to calculate fame, right? Because Drag Race is sure more people maybe maybe more people not maybe more people do know me, but I don't feel like that changes my level of fame though. So that's what fame is. How many people like Is that what fame is? Like the, the number of people that know you? I don't think that's what fame is necessarily. Like, I think let's, fame let's, is, let's, let's, let's go back to old survivor. Let's define what is the definition of fame. Yeah, I feel like it's probably going to, I think fame is, is, is pr- most likely quantified by how many people know 
who you are. Yeah, the state of being the state of being known or talked about by many people, especially on account of notable achievements. So I guess if you are known by more people, then, you're then more you are more famous. I guess I guess I am more famous. Sure. Would you do one of those shows? Uh, it depends on the show. Um, I really want to, I used to want to do Dance with the Stars, which Shangela's on Dance with the Stars right now, by the way. Um, I really wanted to do Dance with the Stars a couple of years ago, but I wouldn't want to do it in drag because I just don't feel, well, I want to wear a corset and I feel like you can't do all the stuff I don't want to do in a corset on the show. You know what I mean? Um, and otherwise I just feel, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with my, you know, presentation on the show. Mm -hmm. Um. But it does still look really fun to me. You know what I mean? And I feel like a lot of times in these shows, they really want you in drag. I get a little bit nervous about doing this kind of stuff in drag, too, because, like, they, it's like they really, they like, when you do this in there, they're like, you're going to be in drag, right? It's like they only want you in drag for some of this stuff sometimes. Yeah. I, if I did Dance with the Stars, I would, I would love to Dance with the Stars. A, but just such a, like, every celebrity, like Amber Riley talks about, like, doing it, like, how she got into, like, really good shape. And I said, I would, I would honestly want to get into it for the physical benefits of it. But also, I would love to. Like I said before. You go dancing. I would. But, like, when you have to keep that schedule, when you're trying to, like, get to this goal, you have to, like, maintain the schedule of, like, like these people rehearse so much. They're rehearsing so much. Like, hours and hours a week during the rehearsal. Like, when you have, when you're committed to this thing, like, you're committing all your time to it. Whereas, whereas when there's just an extra extracurricular activity that you're paying for yourself, you're like, yeah, I'll do it. it, it it'll be hard for me to... Do it like I would for Dance with the Stars. So I think when you see someone who's like uh, got a full time job, like forty hours a week, and they're like really fit, I'm like, what are you? What are, what are you doing this? I've seen people who have full time jobs, their parents, and they're like ripped, and I'm like, when are you doing this? When are you doing this? How are you working eight hours a day, taking care of your family, and going to the gym for hours a day? Maybe, maybe, maybe something's not getting the attention it deserves. Some people are just genetically blessed. Like sometimes like there was this um this TikTok, this guy talking about, you know, like, you know, when people like pick personal trainers, people pick these personal trainers because like, you know, these this trainer might have like the body you want. He was like, honestly, he was like, I just someone who's a certified personal trainer. I've done the work, I've been doing this for like 40 years. He was like, sometimes you're just you you genetically you just have it. So you just like genetically, you're just your body will get there in a way that someone who does who is not genetically gifted in the same way can. A lot sometimes a lot of like physical stuff like that, it is genetic. It comes down to genetics. I do agree that a lot of people are genetically blessed, but those people who are like really muscly, is, especially if they're not like doing like anabolics or anything, they are just killing themselves in the gym. Oh, yeah, they, they, like it's just, like those people who are like 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 who like have, not just ripped because they're like skinny. Or rip because they have tone, but like who have like the massive muscles. Those people are just fucking working out like animals. It's wild. and also eating like they they have the discipline, right? They're eating broccoli and boiled chicken and fucking carrots, and they're doing their meal preps. And like on a Sunday night when the kids are in bed, they're spending the whole their whole Sunday night until they go to bed preparing forty meals for breakfast, lunch, dinner for the next seven days. Like, because they're disciplined, they really want to achieve that goal. Which I'm like, bitch, work. I'm just not that disciplined. I will never be disciplined enough to that. They had like a, a point, like in my early 20s, like when I was like, at, I think in my adult life, like my like best shape, like right when I graduated college, when I was like really like, I was doing, I forgot what the meal, the, the, the meal prep program was. I forgot what it was. I was doing that, and I was going to do it twice a day, and like for like seven months, I was committed to that, and I was like. I look at we talked about this before. I looked at old pictures back then. And I was like, I was really, I was really in my in my in my fitness bag. I don't think I will ever be committed that much to losing weight ever again. When I first moved to New York City, I was very, I was very dedicated to fitness. I did P ninety X like every. I would do P ninety X, and then like I would just do regular workouts for thirty days, and then I go back to the P ninety X again. I used to like. Uh, How old are you? Twenty two to mm -hmm. like twenty six. Right. I used to jog like. I used to jog two miles to the gym and then do 30 minutes of cardio and then work out for an hour, then jog back. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's wild. Three, four times a week. Yeah. So, like, your body is on like top of doing On top of doing all those shows I was doing. And I was like, wow, well, that, that is wild that I was doing that. See, but so your point about people like who have kids, or whatever, I was like, when you like want it, like you find the time, right? Like, 
when they maybe they they're taking the kids, the kids go to school at five o'clock and they're going, they're working up, they go to twenty four hour gym, they're working up at three o'clock and going to the, you know what I mean? Like when you want it that bad enough, but you find the time to make it work. Does Patty carry your bags for you? Um, Who's carrying more bags? Your Patty. We equal it out. Like we, if we no, no, when Patty and I travel, we normally travel with three bags, and he would normally roll two, and I'll roll one. You think or, I'm, or what? Or, or, or when is we just carry the same amount when, it, when when it's equal? Do you think The Rock has someone carrying his bags? I'm sure. Like, what are the chances that someone working for The Rock is bigger than he is? But then I'm also imagining like The Rock has someone like Patty by. Like Patty carrying all of his bags, and the rock is just like, like, like. Do you think the rock puts his own suitcase in the trunk of the car? No, I mean I don't like when because typically if they arrange a car for you, like you pick it up and, and, and I mean like an Uber. Like I don't know the rock driving. I think Ubers, but like what or or if the rock's driving and he's with his assistant, and the rock has a big suitcase, is the rock picking the suitcase up, put it in the car, or is his assistant who is I I can't imagine. His assistant is stronger than he is. I would be really shook if he were. If they were, but with that, I don't think it's about about the assistant being stronger. It's like can they can they do it? Like, I, I know it's not about them. It just it, in my head, it's just interesting to imagine the Rock watching someone like Tiny put his suitcase suitcase in the trunk of the car. Something about that is really the Rock. It's not that it's funny to me, but it's just like it's just interesting to think about. Because I've I've had I've had an assistant who's weaker than I am. Your assistant's always weaker than you. I only had two. But I'm also a, just a large Damn, I'll be guy. running through assistance. Damn. There's a lot of turnover to Bobby Drake and LLC. Yeah, two in seven years. You got me. Um, and I'm one in five. You also didn't have one for the first, like, two. That's not true. I had Patty, Patty and I working from day one. What are you talking about? And who referred him? Not you, Peppermint. That's not true. Anyway, um, that's a complete falsehood. Um, I also referred him to Peppermint and I referred him to you. I was like, you know, because Patty was like, Patty ended up leaving Peppermint. And I was like, you know, Monet's looking for an assistant right now. But, so I guess, so, like, so then you would have known that I had Patty since the beginning, instead of the first two years. So either you either referred Patty or you didn't. Which one did you do it then? I said I referred Patty. But you literally said, I said Monet's looking for an assistant. But now. you said, I, you said I didn't have an assistant for the first two years. So did you refer Patty or not? I don't know your timeline. Uh, I, okay. I, I uh, but how does that mean I didn't refer Patty? Because you, then you know I did. If you referred, I don't Patty, know your timeline. If you Gary. referred Patty, you know I don't that, know your you whole timeline. Know. Let's take a break, and I'll tell you how you know. Oh, my little kitty cat Colleen is such a little goofball. My little girl, who I can always count on to keep me entertained. She's just really cute, especially now, getting towards the winter time. She's getting like a little, just a little, little light, lighter fuzz on her. It's very cute. Something else I can always count on is Pretty Litter. It's the only cat litter I'll ever use, and here's why. Pretty Litter crystals change color to detect early signs of potential illnesses like metabolic acidosis, which can cause diabetes, urinary tract infections, kidney issues, and so many more. Pretty Litter is ultra absorbent and instantly traps odor. It's lightweight, dust free, and works for up to a month without clumping. That means no more wasting litter. Plus, Pretty Litter ships free to your door in a small, lightweight bag. You never run out of it. I don't. You don't have like some massive container of litter taking up space, and you don't have to lug that bulky container from the store to the car to get it into your house. Once you try Pretty Litter, it'll be the only litter you'll ever use. Go to prettylitter.com slash rivalry to save 20% on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash rivalry to save 20% on your first order. prettylitter.com slash rivalry. With my schedule and how I'm always on the go, I don't really have a lot of time to do the things that I want to do, like reading. That's why I love Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers of motivation, wellness, business, and more. There's so many things to choose from. With Audible, you discover exclusive Audible originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases, girl. All Audible members get access to a growing selection of audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts that are included with Membership, you can listen to all you want and get more added every single month. I love to listen to my audiobooks on the way to the airport or when I'm just driving through LA, going for a walk. You know, I love to uh, clock my steps, honey. Uh, when I'm stuck in traffic, there's always a great job. I listen to uh, Michelle Visage's entire book on like two or three trips. 
Let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. Visit audible.com slash rivalry or text rivalry to 500-500. That's audible.com slash rivalry or text rivalry to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking up on your credit score? Didn't think so. At Chime, that's exactly what they do. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash rivalry. That's Chime.com slash rivalry. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bank Corp Bank or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees apply except at MoneyPass ATM in a 7-Eleven location and at any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Other fees such as third-party and cash deposit fees may apply. Your style is constantly evolving and it's time your glasses start keeping up. With pair eyewear, changing up your frames is easier than ever. Just snap on a new design to transform your look whenever the mood strikes. One pair endless possibilities because who says glasses have to be boring life is short girl so why not change things up with pair you get a great pair of glasses at a great price they make glasses fun cute fierce sexy fly swapping off frames is a snap literally thanks to magnetic tops <laughs> i love a magnetic top off just choose a new top remove the old one and snap the new design into place easy as that the shopping process is really cool and super easy Pair's virtual try-on lets you sample their wide variety of frames shapes right from your computer. If you pick out a base frame that works for you, and then you just get to choose which swappable top frames. You want to have blue light lenses, you want to have sunglasses, readers, light responsive lenses, and more. So many options. I'm obsessed. I love being able to have sunglasses while I'm out driving, and then just swap them up and chic when I'm done driving. What do they do? Work. Get glasses as ever-changing as you are with Pear. Go to PearIowear.com slash rivalry for 50% off your first purchase. That's 50% off at P-A-I-R-Iwear.com slash rivalry. Because if you refer to Patty, you know that I had it since the beginning. Because I don't know your timeline. Uh-huh, sure. Anyway, continue. What does that, what does that mean? They know. I don't know. What, is that? what does that mean? Go ahead. We were saying The Rock. I said everything about The Rock. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that the, when The Rock is hiring people, he like they know what the job is. And, you know, and, you know, The Rock, and honestly, The Rock won't even deal with that. The Rock is probably gets his car. The Rock just walks to the car and sits down. He probably, I'm, I, The Rock probably has more than one assistant. And they all, they work and they delegate. You know, a friend of ours works with, um, has worked with Beyonce before. And Beyonce has four assistants. And, like, they all, they just do the stuff. Like, maybe, maybe it's just that he does pick up his stuff. Maybe Rock's just like. Maybe he does. Who, who, who knows? I, 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 you know, maybe he's like, I'm getting my extra lifts in. Maybe. Because he's obviously going to the gym a lot on top of being one of the, literally one of the busiest actors in Hollywood. Right. So with all that, I think it's safe to assume the Rock probably has multiple assistants and he just, he gets his phone, he has maybe his little bag or his bone bag or his book bag, whatever it is, he sits in the car and things happen and he gets to this thing and it's all taken care of. So What's the Rock, bone bag? Like, a, like, your, like your little Gucci bag. You call that a bone bag? Think that's what it's called, a bone bag. Yeah. In fashion. And, uh, in the UK, a bum bag is a is a yeah a fanny pack, like a fanny pack that you wear around your your waist. Right. So we put it across your chest. Oh, just, so in, in America, when it's over his chest, is a bum bag. No, I'm saying, but everyone calls it a bum bag. That's what that's what that's what fashion is. Instead of calling them fanny packs, they move to calling them bum bags. Interesting. Yeah. And they don't say fanny pack in the UK because fanny means pussy. Fanny, your in fanny the, in the UK. Did maybe you tweeted something today, and I was like, oh my god. Also, shout out to. At it's underscore Silvio in this sponge look. I am obsessed, y'all, with this fucking video of him twerking in this sponge look. He 
You, I mean, they better work. Obsessed. I'm gonna put this on my Instagram. I'm obsessed with you. SpongeBob. Then what happened? I said, "Night Mission during SpongeBob." They. Thank you, Silvio. Oh wait, so my uh, oh, um, you hit me a lot. Yeah, I'm I'm returning the favor because it's been years of me suffering your abuse. There's a video that they put together of you, Monet. Yeah, and I and I think they can make a video because I I realized I was like Monet hits me a lot. I was like, what is you hit me? You want? I'll show you hit. I hung out with um. Martha Colo over the past couple of weeks of days. Martha Colo, Martha Colo is so funny. We were sitting at um the new house. Which I went to Clayton County. I know I don't I, I'm not gonna take your business. But I was like, this is a nice house in Clayton County. And I know you're saying the neighborhood is wild, but it was like, like I mean it was a nice house. Like the way that you described Clayton County, I thought that we were gonna roll up to <laughs> something. I was like, this is a nice home. Someone would have loved this whole. Well, I mean, Clayton County is um, bad neighborhoods, or 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 I don't know what the what the phrase I'm looking for is different in the South than it is in other places. Again, nothing in the South is old. Everything right. in the South, everything in the South is new. So I used to say, even when I lived in the projects, we still had central heating and air. Like everything in the South is new because the South was destroyed during the Civil War. So there's there's very there's like barely anything in the South that is actually pre-war, except these old plantations that were probably guarded by um, you know, soldiers and stuff, so they probably didn't get uh destroyed. So things in the South just kind of don't have that raggediness that things in, uh up north do. Because like uh, also it's interesting, like no matter even in the poorest of neighborhoods, you have central heating and air in the South. Whereas in New York City, even the most wealthy and expensive apartment, you still have a window unit. I mean, no, I, I get that. I was just like, this is like a nice. I was like, I was like, we told my mean St. Lucia. I was like, bitch, this, I was like this house in St. Lucia, girl. It was. I was just like, I was just very impressed. I was like, this is like, this is fucking fierce. I was like, but go off. Anyway, I had my mother call, and we were hanging out at the new house, and then um, she was eating some watermelon. And she was like, hey, one day, do you want some watermelon? I was like, no, I don't like watermelon. She's like, oh, Lord, you went black. And I thought your mom, she was very funny. I, was kind of, I had a good time hanging out with your mom. Oh, that's very funny. And, uh, and uh, she's in her new place. And it's not done yet, which is kind of stressing me out. But that's totally beside the point. She seemed very happy. And I also met Uncle Steve for the first time. Oh, you don't met Uncle Steve? I love met Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve is very funny. My family is very interesting. <laughs> I have a very interesting family. <laughs> Whenever you meet them, you're all you're, people are just like, "Oh, you weren't exaggerating anything." <laughs> Everyone is literally exactly how you describe them, or even like more like wild, like they're wild. Yeah. Um, but when you hang out with my family, you're like, "Oh, I guess maybe this all makes sense now." Uncle Steve is very soft spoken. Yeah, I mean, at, at times, I think when he, when he meets new people, he can be a little oh, soft spoken. But once he warms up to people, so he, where you get it from? Because you, 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 you adapt some of those traits. Because as long as I've known you, you ain't been thought about nothing. Why would you want me to be soft spoken? Because I would like that. Is my eye shining you? <laughs> Does it feel like you need, like, do you feel diminished? No, it's just very aggressive and abrasive. And I think that you can. Wow, describing black people as aggressive? Yeah. Yikes. No, not black people, just you. Yikes. I think you can work on that. I want to try it. Uncle Steve. Uh, it works with Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve is very charming and very soft spoken. No, I think I'm doing really well I for myself. It. And I don't think I just have to change my personality because you want me to. That's up to you. What do you want to change? What do you want to work on? Uh, what do I want to work on this year? Oh my God. We're, we're, it's about to be. Don't, don't 20, change the subject. What do you want to work it's on? It's about to be 2023. I am gagged. We, is, what, are you, what are you working on? On, on this side of the. Oh, I'm screen? perfect. Well, I was watching this last episode when I grabbed my penis and, <laughs> and said, meteorologist. <laughs> and you can be so prudish sometimes. My child was vulgar. If you all have our bodies, but we should celebrate our bodies. I did not say you shouldn't celebrate your body. All I said was I thought it was vulgar. I didn't say you shouldn't do it. I didn't say- What you if I grab my tits? In, 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 the, in certain contexts, it can be quite vulgar. And I was like, ooh, that is vulgar. Like, for example, you can use vulgar language. And I'm like, ooh, that's vulgar. That doesn't mean it's bad, but it does mean that's is vulgar. Is this vulgar? That is vulgar. 
Like I think I think vulgarities would be like if you probably wouldn't do it in the middle of a graduation speech. Not necessarily, but a lot of vulgar stuff you wouldn't do in the middle of a graduation speech. If you if you were like uh, fellow classmates, someone would be like, "God damn, that was vulgar." And I don't think everything falls in that category. Like you wouldn't make a, gra- you would, like you wouldn't make a souffle during a graduation speech. That doesn't make it vulgar. This is my knee crack last Saturday. That was. Maybe it's from all the years of you making fun of my knees and now actually it's coming to you because you did it to me. I did a leg day two days ago. Ain't I do a leg day? My shit be sore as fuck. Remember doing a leg day and your shit used to be like sore. What do you mean remember doing a leg day? What does that mean? That's one, the, the, what are you talking about? You said like it was 10 years ago. Do you remember back? What well, you were talking about when you, your little tw- uh, 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 eight hour gym days you were talking about just now. Running, jogging to the gym, doing exercise. When you were 22 to 26. 22 to 26, those years. Thank you, Jacob. I've worked out. Since I was 26, I'm going to make it very clear. I have worked out since I was 26 years old. I've worked out since I've been 36 years old. And um, and I do remember having leg days. They've been as recent as as this year. But um, I don't remember my legs like cracking and stuff. Or just my thighs would be a little sore. I remember like, oh, my thighs are sore. But my legs weren't like cracking and stuff uh, from the workouts now. Have you ever been on your knees sucking the dick and you're like, oh, my God, I'm never going to get up from here because my knees are done. Like when when you when you've been on them for too long, well, I put a pillow under my knees. Are you saying something you put a pillow? Or or I'm or we're laying on the bed. So I'm just laying down. Have you ever been kneel like not when you like on your knees? You know, like the squat. Have you ever squat like the dick? Like you be like outside in public or something? You're like ooh, because you don't want to get your knees dirty. I don't know how many dicks I've ever sucked in public. Very few, less than five times. Have you ever done like 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 play like out in like the brambles or something like in like? No, I've never I've never done cruising. You never cruise ever? I've never done cruising. Really? I've never done cruising. Wow. When I was young, well, you know, when I was uh, coming of age, I felt like that was the only way to do it. Like, I didn't know how else to hook up. You know what I mean? Because it was before apps. And it was, I didn't, I, I didn't know about Craigslist. So the only way I would, like, find trade would be, like, on the street, like, on a train or something. Never been my experience. Work. Um, when, when was your first gay experience? How old were you? I was... Uh, I was uh, a freshman in college, Work. and I was like 18 years old, and I hooked up with a guy named Pee-Pee. And I uh, can't remember the first time when he blowing that guy in the closet or hooking up with that other guy. And I remember him was Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, baby, whoa, whoa, whoa. Go right back to the closet. Run, run that back, shorty. I just I blew a guy in the closet. I mean, that's- Can you, you give us some backstory? I like went to his, to his dorm. He, I was like, where you at? He was one of my friends. I was like, oh, okay, and I came to his dorm. And I was drunk, and I like uh, he had like what? there was like the dorms were like four at CSU the dorms there were there were two sets of dorms there were these old dorms that were like they were like apart they were all all the dorms were apartment style none of them were like those community shower shits it was, all the dorms in, in at CSU were all apartment styles but then the newer dorms were like fans there were four bedrooms four bathrooms each one had a bathroom inside their bedroom like a private bathroom. But the old dorms were were uh, more like apartments, like a regular apartment you would see, like a four bedroom apartment, tiny little bedrooms, two bathrooms in the dorm. So you have your own bedroom. Everyone has their own bedroom. I was not. A, I was. I never lived, lived on campus. But um. it, it was four bedrooms and two bathrooms in the old dorms. Anyway, there was an empty dorm. Like one of he, one of these dorms, one of the rooms just was empty, and I pulled him into that room from his friends while they were hanging out, and then was like blowing him in the closet, and he was like, "I I gotta get back to my friends." Did he finish? No, and I was drunk. I probably was doing a horrible job. And I was like, <laughs> and, and it might have been, I think it was my first time ever doing that too. Like my first time ever, and I was just. Like, it was your first time ever sucking a dick. I think so. I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't twelve or anything. Did you ever practice? I waited a little bit. Practice on like no. I don't know. I don't know a dildo or something. I never practiced. I just. I just dove straight to the deep end, and. um yeah, and that was that was my first time. I, I'm pretty sure that was my first time sucking a dick. And then I thought it was the other guy who was in the theater department, and I was like, I was still closeted both those times. And I was like, what if? I was like, wait. I, I was like, wait. I remember being drunk. You were off. drunk for that to one too. Yeah, for sure. I was always drunk. I was drunk off of. Uh, I think it was peppermint schnapps or or something like that, or a hundred bananas. Or something like that, or 99 banana, whatever that thing was called. And um, and I was like, what if everyone finds out in the theater department? And I remember him saying, at the time I thought it was very sick, he goes, it's no one's business. 
and then we had sex. But you talked to him? Yeah. Got it. I don't think I've, I don't think in my, I've, ne- I've never had sex on, I never had uh, sex on drugs or alcohol ever. Like having sex drunk never sounds fun to me and having sex on drugs never sounds fun to me. I'm like, maybe I've been like a little like stoned, maybe like a little bit, but I've never, oh, is this them? I'm trying to find the guy from the closet, but no, he's too young. That's definitely not him. No, that is. Wait, I don't know. Jordan 2004? We have 86 mutual friends? Oh, they're all in New York. Okay, yeah, no, there's no way that's him. I was about to say, no fucking way. I mean, I don't, remember, I don't remember his last name at all. There's no way I will ever find this guy. I think I'm also spelling his name wrong. Um, hold on. Is this him? He, from, should I type in Columbus? I don't know how this work. Uh, Columbus. I, there's no, I'm ever gonna find this guy. No, that's just some guy named that Columbus. All right, and this guy. Let me see if I can. Okay, this is probably not great. Um, content. Is that? No. They're gone. They're long gone. We'll never see them. I don't think I've ever had sex. Sex sucks. I never had. You sex never had on, sex. I never had sex on any like drugs or alcohol. Maybe like maybe a little. You've never stone. been drunk during sex. No. When I'm drunk, I don't feel like sex. You never like really. left the club and hooked up with someone. But not when I was drunk. I, I've left the club with someone, not when I was drinking or anything. Like maybe I had like one cocktail. I'm not like drunk. Like let's make out. It's never my thing. I don't feel sexy. Like, not, like I, I don't want to have sex when I'm like drunk or like, I don't, I don't think that's a thing for me. Maybe like a little stone. I like went bit with someone and we like smoked weed a bit and maybe like hooked up like that, but never like, I'm like on drugs. Like, I love how we went from like, I've never had sex drunk or, or high or anything. Okay. I mean, okay. A little stone. Okay. But a couple even, of shots. But even okay, that. A, a hint of Molly. Okay. If, if me and the one guy, crack rock. If me and the guy are hooking up, like, I like basically like one pool or two pools, not like smoke a whole joint and like we'll like fuck. I don't I don't think drugs or alcohol make me feel like one if I don't feel like I want to have sex on them. You know, I've I've never really, I haven't done a lot of hard drugs in my day. I've done a, a, a I've done a little bit of uh stuff here and there, mm-hmm. but nothing. I've never done cocaine, I've never done Neither. Molly, I've never done meth, I've never done um I mean, I did used to huff computer duster. Yeah, that's back the, in the that's day. the thing that makes you high, lightheaded, right? Yes, it makes you very lightheaded. You're only high for like 20 seconds, if that. It was to me that like that's like that's like people that do poppers. I'm like, I don't get poppers. Like I've tried poppers once, and I was like, I don't understand. It's like anytime I like bottom when I bottom, I just fucking bottom. I don't. I, and if you need poppers to make you loose and open, I just don't. <laughs> Jacob said, I just don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, it doesn't do that for me. Have you ever tried poppers? No, I've never done poppers. I didn't even know poppers existed until I got sober. Mm. And I was like, poppers? Yeah, I don't, I, I, I had the Molly before, and, and that even. Well, and, I don't say they're horny on Molly. I don't feel horny, I just feel like dancing. I feel like music just feels so good. I don't, I don't do a Molly, but like, <sighs> and I've seen people get that way, and I'm like, mm, I don't get it. But I just feel like I just music just sounds and feels so good. You like just want to dance. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people who do go to those like circuit parties are all on drugs. I'm like, yo, this music is not it. Circuit party. We talk about this before on the, on the podcast. Circuit party music is, but I think it's it's for high people. It's for people who are high. I guess it just does not sound. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound. It sounds like it's just. Have you ever been to a circuit party where you're high? No, but you I, might you might change your tune. No, but I've taken a Molly and heard Stoker Party music, and I'm not I'm not sitting there like I was like I was I like, can be, we get some Beyonce or Beyonce? Be Gaga? The, I think it might have to be at the Circuit Party. Maybe it'd be high at the Circuit Party. I'm assuming. I I'm also not interested in going to Circuit Parties. Like I when I see like pictures of Circuit Parties, I'm like that doesn't look fun to me. I'd rather just be like a few close friends and like dancing and like having fun as opposed to like like a big sweaty Circuit Party. Like dancing where? Like what kind of name the 
perfect outing with you and your buddy. Um, at like a, a, a house of fire island with like a nice pool, with like nice weather, you know, like a few cocktails and just like listen to fucking obviously the Renaissance album. <laughs> that sounds like, oh, she put out another visual today. Beyonce, oh, yesterday. Beyonce put out a little visual of, of the song Summer Renaissance and it looks so cool. It's like she's evoking that like Studio 59, uh, Studio 54, um, Vibes. It just looks so like to me that 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 sounds fun. That sounds cool. Is she gonna release this whole fucking uh, visual on reels and Probably. small chunks? I um I don't like listening to music and dancing when I'm at someone's house. Like dancing at a house doesn't sound fun to me. Mm. Being at someone's house and dancing is just it's for me. It's just not it. I prefer to be either watching videos talking or playing a game but i do not want to dance at someone's house you don't like house parties i like i like house parties i don't like dancing at someone's house interesting i think that's i don't know about a house like i think that's great it's so fun i think it's also different because you're for me anyway partying is very different when you don't drink Mm -hmm. it is a completely different experience than what Mm -hmm. you're having because those two or three drinks Make the night come one hundred percent different. That makes sense. And when I'm at the party and I'm like, and you're just, I don't know, you're like part of this like vibe, and you're like got your fucking white claw. Oh, your favorite thing. word, the V word. And you're like, oh yeah, and I'm like, I just don't, I, I, that's never, not never. When I was drinking, I used to love to dance at parties. And how's that different from like a club to you then? Like, what's the, the like? Is it like more people make it feel more like dancing? Well, the music is typically more intense um because like it's just it's just not the same at a house party you'll you never have you'll never have a sound system at a, i mean not never but rarely we have a, a sound system at a house party that will rival one right. at, a, at a nightclub the in, the environment is completely different uh there's also strangers around you're with your friends and your group uh the music tends to be more varied at uh clubs than it is at house parties you know what i mean typically at house parties it's, the, the music doesn't have like a huge sometimes they'll just play a whole album or, or back to back to back or it's just one person's favorites and stuff as opposed to a professional DJ who's like you know do it, giving the music a real ebb and flow I had some DJ lessons with Patrick Cusaro, who was a who was a New York City DJ and now an LA DJ and um, he was teaching me the ins and outs of DJing and it's actually really fun DJing sounds so fun and I would love and to take people on like a musical journey with like your musical taste sounds so fun yeah, I've, I've DJed a few times. I've done, I, I, I DJed uh, Spotify's Halloween. What's so funny? Because <laughs> when you DJed at that Pride thing, I was like, Bob had like he had his headphones on. It was a on. Christmas thing. No, it was Pride. What Pride thing? The Pride thing I came to you in LA, and I came. It was Pride in LA. Oh, and the, then, oh, it was and then Bob DJ, and then people were coming, like, "Baby, just give me, give me." I, you can't talk to me on the You can't talk to me. Bob doing his thing. And they're like, Bob, can I picture? Baby, just give me. I, 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 I would talk, talk to you. I was DJing, but if you're trying to talk to me while I'm changing the song, it's hard to talk to me. You'll see. Once you do a little DJ, you'll be like, when you're actually trying to change music, you're like, I cannot talk to you and change this song. Because if the music stops, the music just stops and everyone's like, where the fuck is the music? Like, where's the music? Man? I know. Was, I, I believe it. Just believe me. Like, baby, I got to change the song. I just, I have to change the song. I have to change the song, baby. It was just very funny to me. You seem to really get a lot of joy out of me being stressed out. <laughs> what does it mean? Were you stressed out? Yeah. But you've also said several times that you get a lot of joy out of me being stressed out. I have, but I, I didn't think this was a situation where you were stressed out. You just seem to be hyper focused. Well, it, it is very stressful to be in that situation. You're like, I, I can't. This is, I, I am visibly stressed. Visibly. Like, give me a moment. But I enjoyed DJing. I, I did, uh, yeah, I did that. It was a pride gig at uh, the Whiskey Room. Is it called the Whiskey Bourbon Room? Bourbon Room. The Bourbon Room. I did Fiji's Christmas Party. I did Spotify's Halloween Party. And I feel like I did something else. But and I was supposed to do that gig, too, the Spotify one. You know, like, I was like, oh, the fucking DJ. And what I wanted to do was hire someone. No, this is, I mean, no shade to someone who does this. But if I was a DJ, I want to do, like, a thing like I was actually DJing. But I know some people just get... A playlist made where you just like press play and like you just do your thing. You just no, I think it's pre-make their playlist. They'll make like a mega mix. 
And I, mean, I think that's, that's from a, top to bottom, like a five hour mega mix. Yeah, there's there's entire podcasts that are just DJs doing these like entire DJ sets on like pod, like there's entire podcasts that like do that, like SoundClouds. It's like I know the SoundClouds. I know it's I like it's that. like a three hour like. I mean, if I was in a, a career DJ, that would appeal to me. But if if I was to, if I was a DJ, it would be very sporadic. Tell them here and here. So I would want to be like in the moment, like in the vibe, like living. You know what I mean? But the only reason that the Spotify gave was because Trixie got COVID. No, her appendix burst. Right, and she had to have that Trixie's surgery. like appen- appendix exploded or something, and and uh, and they were like, Bob, have you ever DJ? And I was like. Kind of. Me and Mitch used to DJ together a little bit at the Monster uh, after Look Queen. Mm-hmm. I would go and me and DJ would like me and Mitch would like swap back and forth in the DJ booth. And then the the Bourbon Room gig was because uh, was because Alaska had a family emergency. I went to the Monster uh, yesterday and I saw Holly Day. Holly Day was performing um, herself and you know Nova Sar from Queen of the Universe. Mm-hmm. They were both performing at my old gig. I used to do in New York with Holly. I was, I was, I was Holly. I was one of, I was one of Holly's dollies. It was a Wendy. <laughs> imagine, imagine. I did. I, I don't have to imagine. I lived it. Um, and it was just going walking. I had not I'm been like, to. You're not about to call me no fucking. Dog. I had not been to the monster in years, and to see the usual suspects who would be there every Sunday night, I was like. I was like, you remember that old black dude with the gray hair with the glasses? Mm-hmm. Skinny black dude, bitch. He was still there. I was like, I was like, girl. He's like, hey, good to see you, darling. The other, um, I remember the white guy with the glasses who would hold it, who would uh, who would have a shirt down here of titties, and he, yeah, we call him tits. He'd have a shirt. He had massive pecs. Like it was like all he did was push ups, and, and he would walk, and, and he, he would push them up, and he'd hold his his drink between his hands to, like to perk them up. Yeah, like this. To smush the pecs together, and he'd be you like, have "Great tits," and he and he, he that was his whole thing. <laughs> like, okay, no, no, no because you are you like you have pecs. It's so crazy. You have you have the you have, you have, you have like the Shaquitas. Why is that crazy that I have pecs? No, I'm saying, but you have, you and Shaquita have the thing where y'all can take your pecs and make them look like titties. You ever seen Shaquita do this? Yeah, of course. You take the take the girls and you give them one of these. Bitch, things I have. I don't have. I bitch. I have breasts. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> look, I can, look, that's that's. I can get the girls together. <laughs> now, those are titties, girl. Those are titties. Tell me those are not titties. The people, right. the people listening are like, excuse us. <laughs> but girl, if you if you like mask it properly from the right angle, girl, you look like you have double D's. I wonder if they shock that I have tone. That's not what I said. You will take anything I say and, and flip it into your own. I mean, listen, that's your own stuff. That that is your own thing that you have to handle. That is not my business. Not my business. <laughs> wow, you are really on. You're on one. Well, something when they said today, I cannot remember what it was. Oh, I do. I I remember exactly what it was. It was so. It was. It's so really gratifying to do the podcast. In front of people, because when Monet's on her bullshit, and the crowd was like, "What?" Thank you, Houston. I, I cannot because we, we were talking about um, we were talking about singers, and Monet said, um, "Monet said once every ten years, a voice like Mariah Carey." And I said, "I would say even less. I would say once every thirty years, would you ever catch a voice like Mariah Carey? Maybe even less than that. Maybe once ever." And and I think Monet was trying to say something along the lines of like there's other great singers like Whitney Houston and Celine Dion and these people and I was like yeah yeah there are yeah, there are great singers who have huge ranges but they don't sing like Mariah Carey and I don't even remember how you were trying it was well because because Bob Bob was ne- is neglecting to say what I was saying is that there's nuance to that right when when I say once every whatever you get a voice like Mariah Carey I meant like a great when I say a voice like Mariah Carey I'm not just living it into her range how she has a six octave range I'm living. I'm. I'm. I'm talking in a in a bigger scope of like, of when I say a voice like Mariah Carey, I am. I am including Whitney. I'm including. I'm including these great voices out of the billions of people that are alive right now. You probably have, I don't know, maybe ten thousand people who have voices like that, which is a very 
when I say so when I say a voice that a, a voice that comes along every time, I'm talking about in a in a grander scheme, not literally who can sing the notes like Mariah Carey. And I was saying, I don't think you'll ever find a voice like Mariah Carey's again because of like not just like someone who can sing really well. It's just like because I I do think there are singers who like singers and performers who kind of could be doing a very similar thing. A lot of people like that actually. Uh, especially when it comes to like performance styles. Like a lot of people are like, oh, this is like a thing I've seen or other people are imitating that person. I don't think, I don't, I think it's even hard to even imitate Mariah Carey. Although there is that one TikToker who looks. He looks just like her. Or they look just like her. I can't, it, I'm like, I'm not convinced this isn't just Mariah Carey doing a TikTok acting like she's not Mariah Carey. Yeah, it is good. in, it's just this, this person who does these like celebrity illusions I forget their name. I'm going to try to find them um, while Monet talks about something, but I probably, I'm I no promise that I will actually find this person. I mean, she, and, and when you, oh my God, I love her. I go, I, I go by Lou. Um, and yeah, so, I, so that's what my point was. It was, it was that, and like when you say a voice like Mariah Carey, that's like saying like, you. Ne- yes, there will never be a voice like Mariah Carey because of, oh, there, there they are. Because their voice. Aurelio. Aurelio Sanchez. Aurelio Sanchez. Ex Sanchez, yeah. Yeah, Aurelio better boy. Lover boy. Yeah, they look just like Mariah Carey. It's insane. This is Mariah Carey. You want to put the sound so the TikTok is in here? I don't want to take it down right now. Oh. That's Mariah Carey. It looks like Mariah Carey. The movements, the everything, the. Yeah. It's so Mariah Carey. Um, but yeah, Mariah Carey is, is no, I'm not denying that Mariah Carey is a great singer. She's, I mean, or we, that's not what the thing was. But all, all I was saying was like, when you say, of course, there'll never be a voice like Mariah Carey because your voice is like your finger point. Like, no one else will ever be that. So, when I'm saying, like, I think there are some people who have voices that are like, oh, that's kind of like so and so's voice. Like, but it's never the same. No, never the same. There are people who are like, oh, that, that sounds very similar to so and so. I think that's, that's actually pretty, pretty, I think it's not completely uncommon to have someone be like, you kind of sing like so and so. Kind of seeing like so and so, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like looks. This person looks at that person. Like I, I think that actually now I was saying on stage and I think Mariah's upper register, um, Ariana Grande has something similar, kind of like it's like oh I could hear this in her upper register, but not in her full voice, not in her head voice, or whatever they say. She doesn't have that thing. You see, that's so crazy because you hear that and I don't hear that at all. I, their tones are so A lot big. of people compare them to Their them. tone, and they, they compare them because, because they compare them because Mariah, because Ariana can hit the whistle tones, but their tones, like Mariah's tone and Ariana Grande's tone are to me night and day. Like to me, none of it is I agree. They're not, they're, not, they're not the same, but it's like, there's like, it's like, I think there's a reason why because Ariana Grande is not the only person who sings whistle tones, but there's something about Ariana Grande's up, up there when she's in the stratosphere that's like, that is kind of sort of in a genre Similar to Mariah Carey, which is why so many people make that comparison. I think they both sing pop, and they both and um, I mean, you, I don't hear this 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 similarity. I'm not saying they're saying a lot of people think this. this I'm not the first person to make this comparison, but I think, a lot but of I, think, think I think it's just a pop familiar. Like they're both pop, and um, I mean, they. I don't want to say they look similar because they don't look similar. I just oh, think that they are. just they just reminiscent in the same. Kind of the same things that Ariana had, or that Mariah did. People track Mar- um, Ariana to that stuff as well. But I tonally, I don't think that they sound the same. The same in my opinion, last minute. There are many any not anyone that sings whistle tones, but whistle tones. When you when you sing whistle tones, they kind of always have that same airy quality up there. So that's why when when you say like their whistle, their when you say upper register, you mean like whistle tones, mm-hmm. or you mean like just their, their specifically upper, the whistle tones? Yeah, yeah. I feel like whistle when when you whistle tone, you're kind of like they all kind of sound like it's very impressive. I'm not taking that away, but they don't know about whistle tones. You know? Have you ever tried to whistle tone? No. I think you can. I don't I don't do like singing stuff. I don't I don't I, don't, I very rarely practice uh doing singing things. I sing around the world, but I don't like practice. I'm not like, oh I'm gonna try or do a run. But you always, try to do a but you always try to do your little your little thing and say like ah! you do a little often. I, I, like, I'm, 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 I'm not really practicing singing. I just not want pra- to like I do that, not practicing. But you, I, I feel like I've heard you do whistle tones on this podcast before. I've I've never done whistle. Tone. I've I I can make my voice go really high, but I've never done. I I cannot do a whistle tone work, but I can I can make my voice go very high though. But it doesn't sound like melodic in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Maybe not in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's not like it's not like some like super singy voice. But I 
but I do, um, you know, sing to myself and and are like kind of around. You love this. You love the. You love that. You love a. That's a, that's a gesture I do. <laughs> if you're listening, you can't see what I did. You have to get the Patreon to see it. It's very exclusive content. Yeah, you will see that, the hand gesture that uh, that Monet says that I do uh, a lot. Um, I think we've reached the end of our podcast, Bob. Do you have anything else you'd like to say to the Patreons? Thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful time. I'll see you next time. Be blessed and hallelujah. Amen.